States in Miami 26 years later. She was um, wondering what happened to me, found my cousin, and two years later, here we are married. So it's, um, it's a great story, and I appreciate her a lot. Feeling about being here uh, along one side with your comrades and the inductees, and it's going to be exciting for you. Um, well, it's my first time here, and um, it's such a pleasure being here amongst so many great champions, um, past champions, and uh, uh, present champions. Uh, just to be a part of this selective fighters that did so many great things, and to be a part of it. When I started boxing, I didn't even know that you know, we end up in such a place, being around such great, um, it's a wonderful feeling, such great accomplishment. Uh, I felt like I um, I accomplished way more than I thought I would. So, um, you know, just being in front of you guys is, is a pleasure. And it is the greatest fans in the world, our boxing fans. So thank you guys so much to take part of our lives. I was, uh, I was telling Glenn uh, how our ringside lecture works, and I said I'm going to be a little start up, but I said eventually these fans will be asking you questions about certain punches and certain rounds that he was just so excited about. But I told him what I'd like to do, too, since this is his first time here, is if he could give us a little history about, especially from, from Jamaica, being from Jamaica, such a beautiful place, uh, how he, he got involved in the uh, sport of boxing. It was instrumental in guiding him and, and as we see he's still active in his career so if you could give us a little history on it. Yeah, um, you know, 69, I was born in 69, January, I'm a Kaku Khan. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm a fun loving guy. I, I enjoy growing up in Jamaica, it's on the island. Um, you know, a lot of sun and water. We enjoy that running in the outdoors. Uh, there obviously there was no, um, all of these computer games and stuff back in the 80s and when I was growing up. So it, it, we enjoy childhood, other kids and stuff. You enjoy running around with them and playing all kind of games. So that was a lot of fun for me. When I came to the States, it was um, a little different, different culture, different speak. Everybody speak different. You feel a little bit outcast because you don't speak the way how everybody around you speaks. So um, I took a little draw back for a little bit and then uh, my personality started coming out again. Um, how I got involved in boxing, I was 20 years old, um, a little bit over, overweight, and started looking for a gym to work out, trying to lose some weight. Um, I, I went to uh, a gym, and it had PAL on it. Um, it was a Miami Police Athletic Program. And I went inside and asked the people them about what is going on, how it is, it was put in together, it was up and running and they were just put in together. They said, um, it's going to be a boxing gym and if you live in the area, it's free. Free? <laughs> free if it's too much budget. <laughs> so obviously I signed up right away and I was a part of it and I started training, started learning um, the skills and um, the trainer asked me if I wanted to be, be a part of the amateur boxing and I said, if you think they can do it, I do it, and um, three years later, after winning some amateur fights, and asked me if I want to turn pro. I said, you think I can do it? I do it. And uh, we turned pro, and um, the history, you know it, and here we are today. I'm, I'm very excited. Like I said, I accomplished way more than I started out to uh, accomplish. I was wanting to lose weight. That's all I wanted, and I accomplished all of this. And sitting here in front of you today, I'm very excited and, and, and pleased. Thank you so much. There must have been a point though when you realized that you, you had really developed the skills in the game. I mean, you, you, were, you were excelling to fight the, the likes of Roy Jones and Antonio Tarver and win. Well, you know, I started to believe I, I accomplished some, some skills when I got my first compliment. Um, coming from where I come from, you don't get compliments often. So when you got your first compliment doing something, I was hoping. I was very excited. I felt like I found something. I was working construction as a young man, you know, doing labor work, and then I started doing some carpenter apprentice work until I learned the trade and started doing some carpenter work. So 
for me, I was thinking that might have been my future. At the same time, I was in the gym training, trying to lose weight, like I said, and all of that stuff. But I turned out I found a career in boxing. So um, I'm very excited. I'm glad that I learned boxing and I'm able to do fought against some of the biggest names in my era. Um, Roy Jones, Bernard Hopkins, Tauber, um, Monte Griffin, um, you know, and, and a few other names that, that uh, I'm not thinking of right now. But I had a wonderful career and great fights, and I think the fans appreciate the way I fought. Um, win or lose, I always gave my best effort, and I think the fans appreciate that. Noted that you were still active. So, to what degree and what, what can we? Well, I'm, 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 I'm active. Um, I've tried to try to get a, a rematch with Bernard Hopkins. Um, I've been trying to get that rematch now for about 10 years. And right now he's a, he's a champion, so there's no better time than the present. Um, but now I'm, um, I'm also looking to, to go fight in Africa. Um, on the, the anniversary of Muhammad Ali Josh Fulman, it's the 40th anniversary of the 28th of this month in the formerly known upside here, but they call it ER now, but um, we're going there in 28th and, and um, we're fighting a cruiserweight fight against some name I cannot pronounce, so I'm not even going to try it for us myself. <laughs> so, but yeah, so we're looking forward to that and I'm in pretty good shape and we're going to take the next few weeks to get in better shape, better prepare and uh, take care of business. That's what I was going to say, you're looking in great shape and, uh, and that's got to be a very exciting uh, event for you. That's, it uh, is. Very it special. Is. It is because uh, we all know what I mean, meant not just for boxing but just to us here in America. So. Um, I think he's, he's a part of our history and, and, and anything that he did and just to be linked to it is an honor for me. Very special. Right, we're going to open up to some questions. Anyone have a, a question right over here? Mr. Johnson, welcome to Canastota. You've been one of my favorite fighters for years. And in my opinion, one day your name will be in that building. Thank you so much. My question is, um, has the British government called to officially apologize to you for the Clinton Woods robberies? <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't, but I'm still waiting the phone call. Um, you know, we had some, some, we had some, some battles, uh, Clinton Woods and I. We fought a lot of times and, um, you know, he, he gave me the opportunity that I was searching for. Um, you know, Clinton Woods, we fought the first time when they called it a draw, we had a rematch and that's where I won my championship that kind of kicks off my career. So I'm very thankful for, for, for that journey because it made me to the man I am today. Question right here. Hey Glenn, Ruin where you are, um, you have a granite chin and people always, that's your reputation. Uh, let me ask you, who was the toughest puncher that you faced? Toughest puncher. Um, I know. I, I know the most difficult fighter that I fought is Bernard Hopkins, and uh, the hardest puncher I uh, probably would say uh, Tauber punched pretty hard, so I'll probably say Tauber. Question back here, one of the way you're right. Hey, I'm glad. I love your fight against Corey Jones. Love him. Thank you. My question, sir, is how did you play a role for him? How did you get that role? Um, I, you know, I was fighting all over the world, um, different, different places. And um, my name before that was a gentleman. They called me Glenn, Gentleman Glenn Johnson. And um, a, a reporter said to me, man, you're all over the world fighting. They should name you the World Warrior. And I said, Huh, I like that. And I just kept it. <laughs> that was it. Glenn, do you get, uh, uh, you get back to Jamaica much to, uh, to feel your homeland? And how do the people uh, uh, look at you as uh, probably one of the most prominent uh, Jamaican born fighters? Of, uh, um, yeah, I, I go to Jamaica often. Um, you know, over the years, I left, I left Jamaica in 84. Freedom 
much every year. I would say probably maybe four years I didn't go back in total numbers. I didn't have fun in the, in, in the last year. Um, I didn't go to Jamaica last year, so I'm looking forward to going this year. And, um, it's always warm welcome when I go to Jamaica. You, you know, the people they are very friendly. They don't treat me like Houston boats. Uh, okay, so we love running more than anything else, but uh, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. How is the uh, state of uh, young boxers? Um, it's better now. It's coming along very nice. Um, you know, we have a lot of young boxers. Oh, we even have a world champion right now um, that's coming up. So, you know, a lot of the guys now, they're doing so much good work with, with the youth in boxing. It's, it's, it's great. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Glenn Johnson, on your career. You gave us very exciting fights. Uh, my question has to do with the Super Six tournament. How, how hard was it for you to make the weight um, to be in that tournament? And what did you change in your, in your diet or training uh, in order to participate? Um, yeah, it was very, very difficult. Um, you know, I went into the Super Six. I've fought super middleweight in a very long time, so as being, old, being older, to lose that much weight to get involved in, in, that, in that tournament was a little difficult, but it was an opportunity I couldn't turn down. Uh, so one of the ways how, how I lost the weight, I had to get a nutritionist. I've never had a nutritionist before. I always kind of lose weight my way, uh, but for this particular tournament, I had to get a nutritionist. And, and, it, and it, was, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, um, but it was a lot of hard work. And uh, you know, the, the tournament, it turned out very good for me. I, you know, I, I ended up getting some recognition that I would not have gotten if I wasn't in that tournament. So it was very good. Thank you. I'm uh, and then, um, I'm just wondering. We have seen a trend, it seems, in uh, great fighters who uh, like to call the shots and fight where they want to fight. How significant is it, uh, I'm specifically thinking Roy Jones, who never went to Germany to fight Darius Miklachewski, uh, Floyd Mayweather today, who basically has made Las Vegas his home. How significant is it, or, or do you think of it as a knock on a fighter in terms of greatness if they've never gone overseas to fight or um, are just reluctant to fight in an opponent's backyard? Um, I don't think it's a knock on a fighter. Um, I mean, in anything you do, if you can have it your way, it's always better. You know, so I think quality opponents that you, you fight, I mean, if the best around the world want to come and fight you, um, it's no problem with that. I think the thing that we need to pay more attention to is just the judges. We just get a, a fair fair amount of judges that's possible who are going to look at a fight and judge it correctly. Not judge it because there's a hometown guy and give you a hometown decision. Just judge the fight and, and, and whoever win wins. I think that's more important than where you find it. Certainly everyone in the room can be supporting you, but there's only one person throwing punches at you. You know, you watch the referee and he's trying to sneak anything in. But yeah, it's not, and so long, as it's, so long as it's just that one guy in the ring, it doesn't matter. So I don't really think it's a, it's a, it's a knock on any person's legacy. I mean, it's, you know, just work hard and create a great fight for the fans. That's it. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, there's no knock on this man. As we wish him the best as he goes on the road again to Zaire, Africa, for such a memorable historical event. He is truly our road warrior. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Johnson!